first of all, uh, my name is Vladimir, and I'm uh, from the very team where BAM was invited. Uh, so uh, I think you may believe me when I will uh, tell you very strange things. Because uh, the first uh, thing is that BAM is not just about CSS, as I think most of you uh, think. And uh, for me, it's more like a great powerful tool which uh, may help you with almost everything in front end. So you may just sit and use it for your own good, like this. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> nowadays it's uh, clear that you may split any interface into components or blocks. And it's uh, much easier to develop this way. And if you uh, take our BAM.info as an example, we can find that we have header block, then there is a logo block inside, and navigation block and so on. But uh, blocks are made of elements. And uh, getting back to the same example, we can find forum element, link switcher, uh, search, or uh, for logo block, uh, there is icon element. And again, so on, we can find a bunch of uh, item elements inside of navigation. And it should be clear, I think. Then, uh, when we have these blocks, which we like to reuse here and there, uh, we still need some way to somehow uh, make them look or behave uh, slightly different. And to describe the differences, we use modifiers. So we may uh, have a bunch of almost the same kittens, but when one of them is a bit different, we may say that uh, this kitten has modifier type with the value red. And uh, it's not just about appearance. Uh, we may uh, use modifiers to describe some changes in uh, runtime, so when user uh, operates with blocks on a page and change their state, um, it's still uh, modifiers. So here is kitten with state wet. <laughs> and getting back to real life example, you can see that we have our lang switcher element with current language a bit different from other languages available, so it has modifier current. Same with uh, this item of uh, navigation block. This item has uh, modifier current as well, and so on. And this is uh, very basic of BAM, and there are much more on BAM info. You can just open it and find everything out. But I will cover in this talk some uh, interesting pieces. So. A uh, long time ago, without such component approach, uh, developing CSS was a pain. And I believe all of you uh, tried to develop without any methodology. And uh, when you try to move something around, or when you try to reuse some piece of markup in new project, it always not so easy to do. And with component approach, it's uh, much easier. You have such independent blocks, which you may just take, move around, and they uh, contain all the information about themselves. So development is much more like this. And uh, to achieve uh, such a development process, it's not enough just to uh, follow some naming convention, you need to find a way to really easily 
uh, move your uh, blocks, your components from any project to any other project. And to have this possibility, it is very convenient to separate them also on file system. And uh, quite a lot of frameworks, libraries, and even standard of um, web components uh, follow this idea. So they have separate folder or even separate repo for each component and everything about this component is there. Uh, but uh, you cannot just uh, have your CSS or JavaScript on such folder. You can put everything about the same component there. So you may uh, keep your specs there, you may uh, keep documentation there, and so on. But uh, still, uh, a bit of information is uh, is not there yet. We have page block, and we know how it should look like because of page.css. We know how it should behave because of page.js. But information that page has body tag is absent there. And the same for all the rest of the blocks on the page. So we need uh, an abstraction layer on top of it to uh, have possibility to move this knowledge about markup away from our page to block. And actually, it's very easy to achieve. We can just rewrite the same page and get rid of all this information about text. So here we have the same page, header, and so on. This uh, tree, of course, can't be understood by browser. And all we need to do is to rewrite the same tree in a format that is readable by browser. So we invented a very uh, easy way to do it. Uh, we call it PEMGSON, but actually it's just a plain JavaScript object where uh, some fields are spe special and specific to BEM. So we have block and uh, to describe nesting, we use content field. Uh, there are also other fields like LM or mods to describe elements or modifiers. And uh, you also may use any other fields you need on your project. And uh, having this uh, description, we may also uh, mix uh, different entities on the same node. So we can, for example, have this navigation block and a uh, few items inside of it. And uh, speaking to separation of concerns, you may uh, separate knowledge about how navigation items should look and behave from how abstract and very easy to reuse link block should look and behave with just as easy a thing as mixing different items on the same node. And in BAMJSON, uh, it will look like this. You just add mix field and uh, describe which blocks should be mixed there. Okay, so now we uh, move all the information about markup out of our uh, tree. But how to get HTML back again? To, uh, of course, we can use some uh, template engines and uh, try to walk over this tree and apply the information. But uh, we wanted to have the same power that we have with CSS. I will uh, show you what I mean. Uh, let's pretend we have this tiny button and we need to apply some styling. 
we can go like this. Maybe some of you even remember this way when we just add more markup for styling and actually it was rather convenient. The same language to make all the things, everything in the same place. You don't need to uh, think about selectors, you don't need to switch between files, you don't need to learn uh, yet another CSS language to work with this. It just works. But of course, uh, you will never return from uh, this to that old approach. And uh, mostly it's because uh, the same selector will still work when we have more buttons on a page. And uh, it doesn't matter how many buttons there are. It doesn't matter how deep these uh, elements are on a page. The same selector will uh, find all of them and apply the rules. And uh, of course, it's very easy. All of you use this thing every day. And um, why uh, we still hard code tags inside HTML? Why uh, not to use the same idea for markup? And actually, we can. We can uh, describe our page uh, in such abstract format and then use selectors to find all the nodes which match the selector and apply some rules. For example, here we say that as soon as we find button, it should be rendered as button tag. And again, no matter how many buttons will be there on a page or how deep will they appear in a tree, the same selector will match all of them and apply the rules. Let's uh, try and check how it looks in real life. So, okay, here we have just the same example and on the bottom you can find the result of the rendering. This uh, part is for templates. So when we don't have any templates at all, each block and each element will be rendered as a div. And then we can select our blocks. and apply some rules. And as you can see, uh, uh, we still have this separate file with just one time written rules and they apply to each button block on the page. We can have much more buttons, of course. And it still works. We can, okay, let's go further and then get back to check some other possibilities. I already said that it is great to have everything about a block on this folder. And now we get this possibility to move knowledge about markup to such folder. And yeah, here it is. And I think it's kind of really great thing to use and it's really convenient when the same approach is applied not just for CSS, but to any aspect of a component. And now, having these possibilities, it's uh, quite easy to create your own libraries, which you will 
uh, reuse from project to project or share between different people to um, open source such f um, libraries and to develop them. So uh, still, let's get back to uh, CSS examples and try to find out how we can uh, tune such shared components on your own project side. For example, you have your library with button and then some project which uses this library and you need almost the same button but with very tiny changes. For example, library provides us with 200 uh, with button and with green text and you like it but you need it to be uh, red. All you need is just to uh, use the very same selector and you may add any rule or you even can uh, replace any rule. And it's so convenient just because CSS works this way and browser works, works this way. You don't need uh, anything but to import them in a proper order. And yeah. So when new version of library will be released, you don't need to change anything. You just update the library and your uh, project specific rules will be still there. Wouldn't it be nice to have the same possibilities with markup? And yeah, it really works just the same way. You can have some rules on library level and then have the same selector again and you may override any rule. So we can just check it out. So no more reason to uh, think where this component was used. You just update the library and uh, you've got all the new markup just out of the box, just because it works like this. On your project, you don't need to mm, hard code this markup. You just say, here I need a button. And I don't know if it should be rendered with such text, with such attributes. For example, when new version of your library will provide some accessibility attributes, role attributes, you will just get them automatically on all the pages you'll use and all your project specific uh, things still there. Okay, what about JavaScript? Now we have a declarative CSS and declarative markup, but we still lack the, the same power on JavaScript side. So for example, when we have a button styled somehow, and uh, we also have button with modifier disabled, and it is semi-transparent. All you need to apply this modifier is just to add this additional class. And the browser works the way that it will uh, apply it just at the moment this uh, class appears. So nothing more just to add or remove this class. And what we need is the same way for JavaScript. Of course, we created uh, such library which provides you with this possibility. So uh, again, just the same way as in CSS, we write selector for a component <coughs> on a page. This time it's button. And uh, we say, when disabled modifier will be set, we should call some function. And when it is removed, so set into empty string, we should call another function. And that's it. 
just the same as here. You set modifier, rules are applied. You remove modifier, rules are removed. Nothing to worry about. Very declarative way. And moreover, again, you can um, write the same selector somewhere else, and you still have possibility to overwrite any field or any method of the component. So same thing with uh, redefinition of library components will work here. And you may think of this concept as about uh, layers in Photoshop. So I have some abstract library which fits any project. Then you have your own uh, redefinition which provides you with some logic and one more layer to provide theming. And then you combine everything and get the result. And it's not just that. You may use the same idea, for example, to um, build projects which uh, have something in common, for example, for desktop and mobile devices. And it will be your ground layer. Then you add something special for desktops and build desktop site. Or use other layer to build mobile site, and so on. And here how it will work. You have just some ordinary guy, apply additional layer, and you've got a horse. <laughs> So now we have all these things, and of course, we created a bunch of components which are there in open source on GitHub, which you just can grab and use on your own projects. The main uh, library called BAM Components, it's in uh, BAM organization on GitHub. Just uh, go there and find it. It looks like this. But uh, all the theming is absolutely optional. So you can just remove one line which adds this uh, theming layer to the build. And uh, you will get just um, templates and logic, no CSS. OK, so I. Uh, told about how we develop components, but it turned out that absolutely same ideas and absolutely same concepts are still great to uh, test your components. So we have the same thing for all the types. We test for JavaScript, for templates, so we ch check if markup is still the same. And we also uh, write tests for CSS. We just check if uh, screenshots of every component in any, uh, with any modifier, so in any state, are still the same after refactoring. And this approach is really great because it is uh, hard to check markup when it's uh, a huge page but it is really easy when you uh, assert just one piece of it, just one independent block. And uh, if you like all the things that I showed you, uh, let's have a look on how you can try everything at the same time, something like this. We've got a repo called Project Stop where everything is already there. And I will just try to show you how it works. So what we have here is uh, 
a repo with few files and folders. Uh, I think uh, what we're start to oh I don't even do it this way. So now we have just one file called index.bamjson.js in our bundles folder and uh, it has a description of a page. I will remove almost everything and say hello. Now we have just one block called page with some additional fields with modifier theme with the value islands and some content, just a string. Let's open it in browser. As you can see, page was rendered as page class with page underscore theme underscore islands. We use a bit uh, slightly different notation for modifiers. You may think of it just as if it was double dashes if you used to this notation. And now we can just write some blocks say header, then main part, then footer. Extra array, I think. Here they go. Now we can fill something in. and so on. Okay, now we have our markup. What about styling? We just go to blocks folder and create our components. Wow. Uh, what has happened? Our uh, build system found that there should be a block uh, called header and we also uh, configured it to look for blocks in common blocks folder and the stop.blocks folder. It found that there is such folder and there are some styles there. So everything was built. And uh, it really looks for uh, blocks on a page and not for just files on file system. So if we remove this declaration and keep this uh, CSS file, there won't be anything about header here but we still have some uh, styles for page theme islands. If you remove this modifier and refresh the page, there won't be anything at all, and so on. So you don't need to think about what you have there on file system. You may uh, add as many libraries with as many components as you wish, but you don't need to think that it will uh, result with uh, very huge styles or JavaScripts or templates. You will have just the pieces you really use here. So what about templates? Just the same way, we create another file, write selector and apply rules.
remember uh, oh I was commanded out this piece okay so let's try it this way now header is a div and with this file it has header uh, tag and so on same for JavaScript of course I think it's rather obvious and let's check one more thing as I said we have a lot of components and to use them all you need is just to uh, check our documentation and uh, oh no internet Anyways, we have everything, I guess, in a folder, so we can find documentation here. Let's say it will be a button, and yep, here is documentation, so we can find description of each component and just use it somewhere in our page declaration. Now we've got a button, which is actually an anchor tag with a bunch of classes and there is span inside, which is a text element of button block and all we need to do to get all this markup is just to declare that, yeah, we need a button with some modifiers. It should go to some URL and it has this text no information about markup at all. And all the uh, styling in all the JavaScript that was applied is from BAM component library, which is already there on a project stop repo. So once again, uh, BAM is not just about CSS, it's uh, more like a component approach to develop your interfaces when you use the same ideas for CSS, JavaScript, and templates. The same ideas for your documentation and testing. And this is very powerful thing when you try to reuse your components here and there. You can uh, check out our tooling in uh, BAM organization, find out how to automatically build your documentation on top of blocks and so on. There are really a uh, lot of them there. I uh, almost not covered the build system which we have to work with declarations and build all the entities which is there. Uh, so take a look into documentation, uh, find out the tools to work with blocks. This time I just created folders and files manually, but there are tools to do it for you. And uh, we even have special SDK, which you can use to create your own BAM-related tools. So everything is there on bam.info. And remember that you can just pick uh, the pieces you really like, which will fit your project and uh, use them separately. But of course, if you will take everything, it will shine best. And it's time for your questions. Is there a chance to override what gets generated? Like you say you want a button, but it generates a link tag, which is not a button. Yep. And I, can I declare that I want it to be a button element? Sure. Yeah. You just, well, we can, we have uh, a lot of time, so we can just get back and try to do it here. I 
as you can see, uh, it has tape link modifier, and that's why it's rendered as a link. But I will still uh, have it there and just try to overwrite it. So I'll type link. same what's on I think it should be placed in here as button type link dot damage tml actually yeah now it works Um, I'm not quite sure when to apply your tools yet. Um, you have some example content in there, some text fragments. Uh, well, how would I go about combining this with a CMS where the uh, text fragments come from, whatever, the CMS? Um, is that, do you generate your, H your markup initially and then modify it by hand to, to use, uh, to, to adapt it to Twig templates, for example? Mm -hmm. or um, how do you combine a CMS with, with your markup approach? Actually, it depends. Uh, for sure, we will uh, advise you to change tweak to uh, something like this, so you don't need uh, different template engines at the same time, but you can uh, still go with, uh, for example, um, some uh, tweak uh, pieces inside of this declaration, then you may apply these templates on client side because it's just uh, plain JavaScript, so you can call it in a runtime in the browser. Or, yeah, you can just pre render everything and then split it into pieces, but it will be quite hard to get all the uh, profits after library was updated. And uh, yesterday there was a talk about headless Drupal, so I think that's another way to uh, solve this question. More questions? Somewhere in the production example? I mean, this is a library now. Uh, Are there yeah. examples where this is actually used in, in a project? I think I'm out of internet, but uh, yeah, I'm from Yandex, which is uh, kind of Russian Google. We have uh, more users than Google in Russia. We have uh, really a huge amount of different services like mail and so on and so on. And uh, we have <coughs> few hundreds of front-end developers there, so we use uh, these libraries and tools for about, I think, <coughs> seven years now, and uh, on very high load, and it's just fine. So, no more questions? Okay, thank you guys. <laughs>